Hey the fellow travelers, Mark here with Walt's World, and we're back in the library for a Saturday evening chat, uh, a Saturday evening travel chat. I haven't even been drinking yet, but I've got my first cocktail right here to talk about travel and see what we're all going to be doing this fall, this winter, and some things you should look out for. So I see we're having questions already coming in, which is awesome, but I want to talk about something that's really, really important today, and especially if you're going to watch this in the replay, I think it's really important we mention this. The Department of Transportation has now come out with their airline customer service dashboard. This is what they've been talking about. They said, airlines, you're going to have to tell us what you're going to do so people can easily see what you're going to do. So you don't have to have a lawyer to uh, read the fine print kind of stuff. And this is what's cool is you go on here. Hold on, let me pop it up here. If you go on, it actually lists what they are going to do if you uh, if they have a cancellation, if they have a delay. So if you look on the top part, it says commitments for controllable cancellations. So what's great is you can look on here and kind of expect, like have an idea of what to expect, what they say they're going to do for you. Because sometimes when there are delays and there are cancellations, you're not sure if they're going to give me anything. Are they going to? Am I going to get food? Am I going to get a hotel? Am I? Are they going to put me on another flight? Could you put me on a flight to an, on another airline? And what's cool is here is they actually list it out here is who is going to do what for what. And it actually starts to understand why some of the legacy carriers like Delta, American, United, you know, are actually ones you might want to be flying when there are tougher travel times because they're giving you more things if things go wrong. So if we look at this first one up here, you know, you've got the uh, rebook patches on same airlines. Look, everybody does that. Look, your plane gets delayed or your plane gets well, the controlled with cancellations that they can control. One of the key things. Weather, that's out of their hands. They don't have to do much with that, okay? But if, if there is a delay or their plane doesn't work or something like that, that's what they're talking about with those cancellations. Everybody will rebook you on the same airline for no additional cost, which is great. Now, here's the thing, though. If your airline, you fly an airline that only flies once or twice a week to a destination, do you really want to wait another five days to get home? Because that could be a lot of money. So one of the things you might want to look at is, hey, Will they rebook on a partner airline or another airline which has an agreement with at no additional cost? So if you're looking here, American, Delta, uh, Hawaiian, hey, go Hawaiian, JetBlue, United, they will get you on another flight on another plane. But here's the catch. They have to have an agreement with them. So there's not always an agreement when you think there's something, but that's giving you a chance that they might get you that Chicago flight or that New York flight or that Paris flight. I know for myself, I've actually had that happen to us a couple of times where we actually got on a different airline and they got us there. So that's something to know. And we kind of go through what's cool is to look at meal. You know, everybody's giving you a meal except for Allegiant. Compromise Hotel. Hey, if there's a cancellation and you're going to be stuck overnight, everyone's giving you a place to stay except for you, Frontier. So this is what you want to kind of look at to see is like, what are people offering? And if we look at delays, you know, the same kind of stuff. Will they rebook you? You know, if it, will they put on a partner airline if there's a deal? What is the time frame for, you know, when they're going to give you food? And this is news that came out this week where they, a lot of the airlines or last week where airlines are saying instead of the four hours, they're going to make it three hours. You got a three hour delay. We're going to get you some money for some food. Oh, everybody, except for Allegiant. OK, so this website, transportation.gov, just look for uh, like airline consumer dashboard or airline dashboard and it will come up. OK, so this is one of the cool things we have out that you can do to see what can actually get done, okay? Because that's one of the things frustrating. If you're going to be on that call or you're, you know, in the line and you don't know what you can do, that's what's nice to know is now they've said what they're going to do, okay? You don't have to read the fine print, okay? So so that's one thing I got to say. Now, I'm going to get there. <laughs> oh, Jocelyn's locked out. I'm sorry. Well, you're locked out of the house? Hold on. Are you outside the house? Everything's fantastic. Joss has just lost out of the house. See, this is why I, I guess it's good. So that's that's uh, Jocelyn. Please open the door. Hey, if you want to see our food videos, you can go to Walt's World Eats. That's where we put our food videos for stuff. If you want to check those things out. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Somebody walked in. I'm sitting on the porch. So we don't yeah. So, uh, yeah. So Jocelyn's around here. So we have that. But what's cool is it's important that you know what your rights are. I mean, that's one thing I think the European Union does a really good job of letting consumers know in their rights and what you, they have, they're going to do. So that's a nice thing that's out there. So that was one thing I wanted to get out that you know that you have 
to kind of check. So when they're like, well, we don't know, you're like, it's three hours delayed. You know, you give me that Visa credit card number that I can put in at the airport McDonald's and get myself some food. Okay. Because that will, that taking that headache out, not knowing what you can get is important because not everything's on that list though. Like some to airlines like, yeah, we'll get you your, your hotel voucher. But once you leave the airport, we're not going to do it for you. So make sure you're figuring all these things out beforehand. Okay. So yes, all kinds of stuff. Oh, Kathy Roberts. Follow for a few years now. Absolutely love your travel advice. Have a cruise for the Danny from Budapest Nuremberg plan. You have a great time. This is another thing we talked about. If you look down there, I talk about travel news on our Walter's World Shorts channel. Every Wednesday at noon, we talk about the latest news in travel. And one of the big things going on now on the Danube and the, and the Rhine, there's record low levels of water. So those river cruises are now bus tours and train tours. So be aware of that um, if you're going to be going. So something I'd like to say, but hey, everybody's on here. So many people actually share. It's, it's great. Tyler's, thank you. For, Tyler, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. Recommendation for a lunch spot after Vatican or Vatican tour. First off, Tyler, don't eat anywhere near the Vatican. I'm going to tell you right now, all this, uh, everything there, they know they've got tourists that are going to be coming out of like a three, four, five hour tour. They're going to be hungry. They don't care if it's good or it's bad or if it's high price or low price. Your best bet is to head back into Rome proper and, you know, out of go out of Vatican City a few blocks away. Actually, from Vatican City, I go like four or five blocks away. Then you'll start finding some restaurants. I don't have a specific spot because here's the thing. If you will notice in our videos, we don't talk about restaurants very often. And we don't talk about hotels very often because they switch so much, especially after the pandemic. So many closed or changed hands that if I give you advice for a specific restaurant today, it might not be there tomorrow. Or if it's good today, it might be bad tomorrow. I mean, that's one of the things. If you look at our stack of Lonely Planet books, they all say things change. So we try to tell you what to eat when you go. So we have that. Um, I don't know when you're going, Tyler, but we have uh, Eats of Rome coming out in, I think, late November, early December. So if you're out before then, we'll have some stuff for you. That's on the Walters World Eats channel. Okay. Oh, Mandy. Hi, Mark from the Peak District, Derbyshire. UK, would love to see you. You local to me sometime, love your content. So I will be in England later this later this fall, and Jocelyn will be here. All will be there as well. She's doing a girls' trip with different friends, but I don't. She's not getting the Peak District, but I still remember driving in the Peak District. We had a Skoda. I was dating an English girl at the time, and that Skoda. It had some tough times going up the hills, and so we'd be going up the hill. And honestly, people on their bicycles were passing us, and I'm like, oh man, this is this is rough. But that's a beautiful part of, of uh, England, if you can go, anybody. I highly recommend it. Aw. Well, Leah, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Hey, Eric B., good to see you. What I love what I love is this one. Honey, I'm locked out. And, and she didn't ring the doorbell. Like, we have a doorbell. It's pretty crazy. So, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, Marvel DC, thank you very much for the super chat or the, the sticker that popped up. Sorry. The stream yard, the stream yard I use doesn't let me show those things, but I know people are seeing those things there. So I will look for Marvel versus DC. See if you got a question or, or post your question again, and then I can I'll, I'll answer it for you. So hey Jim and Harriet, good to see you. The tour of Virginia. <laughs> we gotta get I get back, I gotta get back to the not northern Virginia part, the no, non nova part of Virginia, because people were a little upset in our eats of Virginia. Like, you just were there. You need to come down over here. I'm like, I will, I will. Let's see. Brendan, thank you very much for the super chat, my friend. That was very nice of you. Hey, Mark, I'm going to Jamaica in December. And I was wondering if you have any recommendations around Runaway Bay. I want to split, spend at least one afternoon off of the resort, uh, but I'm not, but <laughs> I'm at, but I don't want to go too far. So let me see. Runaway Bay. I just want to see where that's located. In Jamaica. So, oh, so you're up on the top. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're good. Okay. So, if you're by there, okay. So, you can get over to Ocho Rios, which is a super touristy spot. But there actually are, um, if you actually send me, if you look in our about section, there's an email. You can email me there on our Facebook page. Email me there. There's actually a vegan. It sounds silly, but a vegan restaurant that's all farm to table. You see them making everything. It's like 20 courses of stuff that you swear wasn't vegan food. 
but it's out up the mountains and it's just fantastic. But when you're there, you have a lot of outdoor activities you can do. If you're looking for a day trip, most people go over to like the, the seven mile island or, or seven mile beach to go on the far side or six mile beach. And they, they do the, the catamaran ride from one end to the other to go to uh, the, the Casablanca like bar and stuff. Don't, don't do the, don't do the boat ride. Don't do the boat ride. It's not worth the money. Uh, for me that like personally that's my feeling we had a better time staying at one of the beaches and getting one of the beaches that are it's a private beach so you don't have as many of the the hawkers coming to talk to you and ask you to buy things um and that's one thing i had to say you know where are you going to go in jamaica people are going to be trying to sell you stuff and as long as you're cool with them and respect like hey i already got all my souvenirs that's really cool stuff thanks respect they give it back to you and there's no big deal but that's one thing i've seen especially if like ocho rios or or um any place where the, the cruises come in, that's where you get people to get really upset with the uh, with the with the uh, the touts that are there. So do be a care, do be aware of that. But there's no reason to. They're just trying to make a living. Um, there's another place you can go. It's called the Blue Hole, and that's like all those natural water slides and stuff. Like that's really cool. So if you watch any of our Jamaica videos, you'll see the boys and me swinging on on, on ropes and jumping in all kinds of place. That's called the Blue the Blue Hole. So that's a really cool place. And that's more of a local thing. So when you go there, they're like. Hey, you're not a local, but bring water shoes if you're going to do anything, because otherwise you got to rent them, and it's more expensive to rent them than go buy your own. So, just want to make sure you have that. Mike Martinez, notice how beautiful that shirt is that Mike wears. Isn't that a beautiful shirt? We got to start making shirts again. So we have that. Uh, make sure to get the front door for Jocelyn. Hope all is well. Oh, two. We have a, a special guest to join us for some Q and A here in a sec. So Liam, hop on in. So bring your chair up. So Liam's going to sit in with us since Jocelyn's not sitting with us tonight. But let's see. Let's get – we have a – but, Mike, thank you very much, and we'll make sure – Mom was locked out outside. You didn't tell me. I didn't know she was she was down there. Let's see. <laughs> Brad, man, plenty of videos on what to women should wear in Greece, but none for men. I'm going in April to Greece. What would make me look less pickpocket friendly? Um, looser clothes – I know it sounds silly, but I have a video on – um, what not to wear, what Americans shouldn't wear when they go to Europe. And a lot of people, it gets a lot of hate. But the fact is, is that if you're dressing a little bit nicer, people are less likely to think you're a target and you're making yourself more respectful and you look more like a local. But April, the weather's already turning nice. But for locals, it doesn't seem as hot. Um, so, <laughs> so since it doesn't seem as hot for them, they're still dressing like in pants and a button down shirt or something. But if you at least have like, you know, a nice pair of shorts and, and a, a button down shirt with a collar, uh, that'll help you out. Um, just not, the t-shirts with big logos on it and stuff that, that kind of gives you away. But we really need to watch like, cause Athens, the other is kind of bad in Athens. If you're going, if you're kind of in the, the Plaka area where all the tourist restaurants are, but are still pretty good. There's some there. Um, but otherwise you, you should be okay. So thank you. Uh, I hope that helps a bit. So thank you, Brad. Also for the super chat. That's great. So uh, Liam is here. Oh, Drew has a question. Liam, have you been to any Mediterranean islands? You don't live in Crete. So I guess, would that be your favorite Mediterranean island? Sure. Sure. Do you remember Do you remember anything we did in Crete when you were there? Aside from, so we were in Crete, this is, uh, well, this is like five years ago now. We're going to be going back this summer, next summer. And uh, it was like 105 degrees. And at night, Jocelyn was sleeping like naked oh, yeah, on, on the tile floor. I remember. We're all done. This dude yeah. is like, I'm cold. And he literally has like five blankets on him. And so when you fall asleep, we had to take the blankets off of him because we're like, he's going to cook and die. But he's like, I'm cold. We're like, no, you're not. No, you're not. Stop. Oh, Alan says, Liam, love your taste test videos. So for those of you who don't know, Liam actually has his own channel, uh, youtube.com slash Liam Walters. And um, Liam does like tasting videos like, what we'll see, we've done uh, Halloween candy, Christmas candy, anything that we can find weird or interesting, we'll, we'll throw that in there uh, for him to try. So he has some fun times with that, and you're, you do it with your friends. You want to tell people about your channel? No. <laughs> well, you got to talk a little bit. No? So, hey, hey, Drew, in terms of some Mediterranean islands, Malta is one that not a lot of people get to because it's kind of so far down there, but it's well worth it because everything there, like you go there, it's everything is stone. And it's, we have a couple of videos. I mean, it's been a few years, but they're, they're still pretty helpful. But I would say Malta is going to be one. Right now, you're starting to see Sardinia and Corsica really, like, popping and being really popular for tourists. So their prices are going up. Like, this summer, that became a place where a lot of Europeans were going because it wasn't overrun with international tourists. 
So those could be some ones that could help you as well. So Liam, Paul wants to know, and thank you very much, Paul, for the super chat. Liam, Carl wants to know, now that the queen has passed, have you moved up the royal line of secession? <laughs> No. No, you haven't. You sure? I mean, the queen's not there. I mean, depending on how the how the stuff goes. Here, Sue has a question for you, Liam. Liam, what's your favorite thing to eat in Italy? Doesn't. Well, you tried a lot of cool stuff. Remember, you talked about the one pasta. Oh yeah. You gotta tell them. Um. So I had this pasta, and. It had tuna in it, so I would assume it was terrible. But it was probably the best, one of the best um, meals I had there. Yeah, I was surprised. Like Liam was doing awesome. Like Liam, everything Liam picked up. We were in Italy for a month this summer, and everything he picked was amazing. Like he's got you got like a codfish pasta, which was good. The tuna, the tuna fish one. I'm like, I, I remember. I'm like, are you sure you want to get that? He's like, yeah. I'm like, but yeah, he dude, he was on he was on fire this summer. So, prettiest village in Scotland near Edinburgh. I don't you know what would be a pretty one near Edinburgh. It's been a while since you've been there. No? <laughs> this is yours. Oh, it's mine? Oh, okay. That's my question. Okay. So, Michelle, in terms of nearby Edinburgh, I think I mean, St. Andrews is not really a village, but that's probably the most popular one and easiest one to get to if you are there. If you're looking for a day trip and you're just going to be in Edinburgh, I would honestly go over to Glasgow because in the last 10, 15 years, Glasgow has reinvented itself. With, I mean, before it was like there was some there was some museums and then there was, you know, the university was there and it's kind of drab, but now they've really redone it. So I just say, you know what? Go over there. You want that, but St. Andrews is an easy, easy one there. If you rent a car, there's a whole trek up. If you go up to Inverness, there's a bunch of castles all the way up there, and you can actually theoretically do that as a day trip as well. Um, oh, but then there's um, Sterling. I guess Sterling might be a really good. That I think Sterling. Sterling is going to be your best bet because Sterling is in between Glasgow, kind of, and in, in Edinburgh up here. And there's the William Wallace statue that or monument that's there. There's a tower monument that's there. There's also Sterling Castle and a nice town to visit. And that's also an easy day trip, like super easy day trip. So, so there is that. Let's see. Liam, is there a question? Laura says, hi, Liam. Hi. Okay. Victoria says, love your channels and chats. Thank you very much. Question, I'm a pretty seasoned traveler, but cannot figure out how to reserve a train ticket online for a forward-facing seat. I've been burned in the past. Barf. Okay, this is one of the things. Victoria, you're not the only one because it depends on the train line you're using. If you're in Finland and you use VR.fi, that's the train system there, they actually tell you the direction of the train and you can guarantee a spot facing the right direction. But if you're in a place like Italy or Germany where there's tons of trains and sometimes things get mixed around, sometimes you're a little bit out of luck. Um, that's why if you're going to be booking it beforehand, like online, it's really tough to say. Um, usually, usually the first class is in the front, like 70% of the time. But the problem is you'll probably get one of those 30% times. So that's one thing that's not good. But if you're going to be there early, let's say you're in Rome and you want to get a ticket, go in the right direction. Um, basically, usually if you're in a place like Rome, which is a terminal station, Usually one will be at the very front, and then it goes back in the numbers. So if it's back in the numbers, it means you're going to be facing the other direction. So the long answer is there's not really a way to really know. Um, that's why you might want to go up and talk to the people at the ticket office if they're there. Um, if you don't have a long line, say, look, I really need to get a, a facing that way. So Sorry, Victoria. Unfortunately, there's no simple answer for that. I apologize. Oh, somehow we have flies. Did you see that fly go by me? Going in my ear. So fine ass Amy Fresh. What do you think about that name? <laughs> Hi, Mark and Liam. We'll be heading to Nashville next summer. We'll be on my own for several days while hubby is working. What are both of your favorite things to do there? So Liam, you haven't been to Nashville since you were tiny. So I, I go to Nashville for conferences quite often. I know the one of the worst things you can do there. What's that? Tennessee's playing a home game. <laughs> Rude. And it's against Georgia, Georgia. That's one of the worst things you can do there. <laughs> well, well, luck. So unfortunately, Tennessee doesn't play in Nashville. They play in they play in Knoxville, but yeah, it's close enough. I, I, 
Tell me that tomorrow. That's right. Um, okay, so if you have some time, what I recommend is if you rent a car or actually you can just take an Uber out and go to Franklin, Tennessee. I actually have a video on the don'ts of Franklin, and that's like the cutest town right outside of Nashville, but now it's kind of part of Nashville. It's just grown so much. I would go out there for a day to go around and, and eat and make merry, and there's some stuff there. Um, other things you can do, I wouldn't go out to Opryland unless you're going to go see a show because it's just a big mall out there and not much else to really do. Uh, you can go to Broadway. Here's the thing is Broadway with the live music, that's all day long. So you could just go listen to music all day and they're not going to force you to buy any beer or anything like that. You can just listen to different musicians along the way. Um, the Country Music Hall of Fame, even if you don't like country music, it's still worth going to. I actually found the Country Music Hall of Fame way better than the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame just because there's so many more exhibits and more explanation and it's put together better than the rock and roll hall of fame, which is just like thrown together just too much stuff in one spot. So that would be something I would say. Um, and we do have on the each channel and actually on the each channel on the Walter World channel, we have videos on what to eat in Nashville. That'll help you out. Um, and the good, <laughs> the good chicken places uh, aren't really downtown. They're farther out, but a lot of them now have like a mini station downtown. So you can do that. So hope that helps. Let's see. Liam, let's see, we had a question for Liam. Huh. You can help us, Aviation Matthew, with this one. Hey, Mark and Liam, hope you're doing well. I was wondering if you have any advice for visiting the Christmas markets in Germany, but the best experience, and what are some of your favorites? So, Liam, you've been to a number of these Christmas markets in Germany over the years. What advice do you have to people going to the Christmas markets? Okay. <laughs> Boy, you're really inspiring people to go follow your channel for all of your advice and help. Well, here, I'll talk about it for a bit and see if you can remember some things. So in terms of my favorites, I, I think you need to realize this. The big city ones, like the more north you go, it, they turn less from like religious and not necessarily re religious and like nicer gifts into more kind of cheap gifts and roller coaster -y kind of stuff. Like it's a different vibe when you go. Um if you go to small towns, those are the ones I actually like the best because that's where you actually go and you meet a lot of locals when you're there at the Christmas markets because you get the hot wine and you just sit and talk and there'll be other people outside talking underneath the, the heaters and stuff. So that's nice. Um, I would say if you're going to be going to the Christmas markets, don't worry about dinner or lunch one day because you'll literally just eat at the Christmas market with all the food that's there. And we have Eats of Christmas Markets as well. A video on that. That's on the main Walters World channel. We've got a Don'ts of Christmas Markets. We've got a Five of Them Hates of Christmas Markets in German that'll help you. Some of my favorites, if you go to the Hart, you can go get it. It's okay. If you go to the Hearts Mountains, uh, Venega Oda and Kredlenburg. Kredlenburg, actually, on the weekends, the inner courtyards of some buildings open up. And so there's extra Christmas courtyards. That's really cool. Uh, Venega Oda is another town you can go to in the Hearts Mountains where you can easily find a place to stay. Um, if you go down by Munich, Nuremberg is the capital of the Christmas markets. Like, that's one big one. Bomberg and Regensburg are very nice to go to. Munich's nice to go to as well. Um, places like Frankfurt and Cologne, it's not as romantic, I would say. It's more of the selling lots of cheap um, gifts and stuff, but people eating and drinking. So there are some stuff there. Let's see. Yeah, tickets off a slide for me. Yeah, so there is that. Um, let's see. Stanford Bridge, good to see you back. Just got back from two months in Europe. Just playing your tips along the way. That's great to hear. How are Caleb and Jocelyn? They're doing well. They are not as YouTube savvy as the chumster, Mr. Liam and I. So we're here holding down the fort tonight. Let's see. Oh, remember the Finleys? You played Super Chat or Super um, Super Hot. Super Hot at their place. Yeah. Just gonna say hi. Hi. Boy, Liam <laughs> is just Mr. Talkative today. <laughs> So, Leah, top place to see in Arizona. So, um, Tucson is actually really nice. You go very south. You got the Snoring Desert Museum, which is really cool. That's there. And old Tucson, where they used to film all the like Western movies. So, you have that. That's kind of cool. If you go into North Grand Canyon, you have to go to. That's required. But I actually like Flagstaff. Like, Flagstaff's my favorite city. There's not a ton there, but it's just like a great city with a great vibe. And if you're looking at like, there's like Grand Canyon. Flagstaff, and then there's Meteor Crater here. That's kind of a nice thing to do, and you're on Route 66 as well, so there's some Route 66 stuff to see, too. So so there are those. Route 66 goes from Chicago all the way to L.A. 
Oh, I, guess I didn't that. realize it was that long. So, yep. So Quinlan W. Connolly, hey, Mark and Liam, I have a question. You guys going to go to Egypt next year? That is the plan. That is the plan. So WD Harris, I have no idea what your question was. Like we literally get hundreds of question goings by. So if you if we don't answer your question when it goes by, don't don't be uh, offended by it. Just know that like we don't see everything that goes by. So yeah, no, we actually I'm totally fine when people come up and say hi. It's funny. What's actually more weird is when like we're filming and then like I get back to the hotel and someone's like, hey, I just saw you and you were filming at this place. And I didn't come up and say hi. I'm like, that's actually weirder than if you would have come up and said hi. So, dude, always come up and say hi. We always like speeding our fans. So that's nice. Ah, Liam, we were in Ireland last year. Maybe you remember something <laughs> from there. Liam, what's your favorite food in Ireland? They leave in 10 days. This is important. Bonnie needs to know. I don't like lambs, too. No. Because I don't like lamb. Yeah, you're not a lamb guy. Lamb is good there, though. So you had... You had a lot of good fish when you were there. Oh, the pot pie. pot pie. Yeah, and it's not like your Stouffer's pot pie. This is like, it's like a, a dish, and it's got the chicken or beef or lamb or whatever inside with the veggies and the, the gravy stuff. And there's this fantastic puff pastry on top. Oh, man, you, yeah, another time, Liam totally beat my butt at everything and food this year as well. Even when I ordered the same thing as him at the next restaurant, he would still beat me with whatever he ordered, so. That, that was one thing you really dug when we were there. And if you go on the Walters World Eats, we have a what to eat in Ireland video and a what to eat in Northern Ireland video. Which, so Northern Ireland was Jocelyn and myself and the Ireland Eats, that's um, that's just Jocelyn. So you have that one. Let's see. Oh, this is an important one. Ryan Ward. Hi, Mark. Hello. Do you see St. Petersburg being added as a Baltic cruise destination anytime soon? Just book one for 2023 with Visby seemingly as a replacement. I'm going to say 2023. I, I, I doubt it. Um, but again, I want to like if the war finishes, it will be relatively quickly that destinations will open up again. So Ukraine. Oh. So, so there's that. Let's see. Do, do, do. Joanna's in Sydney, Australia. What time is it there? Oh, it's like. 10 in the morning. You're fine. Okay. Jonathan says hello. Hello, hello. Catherine. Catherine's always on our live feeds on Wednesday, so nice to see you there. Where are you now? We're in our library at our house. So we're, we're here right now. Oops, sorry. Grace, tips for San Antonio. So we have a Don'ts of San Antonio video and a five tips for San Antonio video to give you more than what I'm going to give you now. So you can find those. Just look San Antonio. I, I, honestly, people, if you have any countries or cities you want to go to, put the country name and Walter's World next to it, and if we have something, it'll pop up. But San Antonio, okay, the Riverwalk doesn't have the best Tex-Mex. doesn't have the best Mexican food. You got to go farther out. Like, go to a gas – seriously, go to a gas station or rent a Mexican place for breakfast burritos. Remember the breakfast – or the breakfast tacos. Remember the breakfast tacos we had there? You were loving the stuff when we were in San Antonio during COVID. Do you remember? Do you remember breakfast tacos? You were, like, slamming them down. Like he 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 doesn't remember, but he liked them. That's one thing you want to get. But the, what? Just trying to remember. I don't remember going to San Antonio. That's the Alamo. Remember the Alamo? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, remember the Alamo? It comes back to him. Um, I say Alamo. Yeah, well, okay, Alamo. So Grace, um, one thing you want to have when you're there is called a puffy taco, and you don't get it very often downtown. You got to go to some of the places out of the center. Like go to the San Antonio missions. And that's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's a set of missions you can go see. There's a bunch of them, but there's like three or four you can go visit relatively close. And there's some places you can go and get puffy tacos where they literally like fry the the, the tortilla and then they put the meat in there. It is phenomenal. Like that's one thing I got to tell you. So see the Alamo. Don't think the Riverwalk is the only place to eat that when you're there, get the puffy tacos and go see the missions. So hope that helps. Let's see. Oh, sorry. It's like jumping around on us. I see one. Which one? What is Liam's bucket list destination? Uh, let me think. Where do I want to go? I want to go to Israel, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Israel's one. Mexico's not on the table anymore. Well, you could always go back. 
You can see right. more of Mexico. He's a big right. fan. Um, so what is up in Israel? That's his big, biggest bucket list one there. Um, so there's they never had it in the head. That's true. Oh, Rocky, going to keep doing three days. Thanks for the video. You have a good time. Honestly, though, I don't know if I talked about it enough. Since it's, uh, if you're leaving from the U.S., you can still get good sunscreen. Get like 50 because the, the UV rays are super strong there, and you'll get burned anyway, even if you like put 30 on. So replay, especially your face. And if you've got like um, hair wine, I guess you'd call this, like mine. Like I literally take it and like in there. So, yeah, laugh now, pal. <laughs> His brother's got the great hair, but, you know, whatever. Let's see. Oh, Ozzy, born and bred. Awesome. G'day, guys. I'm heading to Mexico and hopefully Guatemala and El Salvador. Well worth visiting uh, next year. So I've been binge watching all your old videos and travel tips. Thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're hoping to get back and to see you. That was actually our 2020, 2021 Christmas trip was going to be going to Australia and New Zealand for a month. But obviously the world had other things to plan that year. And now the kids are in school I at school ages. Say, I forgot to say Australia. Oh, Australia. It's just the snakes and spiders. I am. And kangaroos. Yeah, and the kangaroos. But look, Ozzy born and bred. He's still alive. She's still alive. They're fine. See? People live there. Night, Iggy. Thanks for being on here. Stroker, um, I have not been to Utah. I have not been to Utah. That's one of the, I think, four states I haven't been to. Uh, Utah, Oregon. Hawaii, Alaska, and North Dakota. So, but like nearby Idaho is fantastic. I love Idaho. So, this mountains, that's going to be something I really like. Let's see. Best attraction in Central Illinois. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, folks. The best attraction in Central Illinois is the uh, Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library in Springfield, Illinois. Oh, yeah. That is one of the best presidential libraries you can go to. They did a fantastic job on it. And like you, you, the how they present it, is wonderful because they have their like there's the dioramas and there's the oh this is what lincoln says what he was and here's what he's doing at this stage but it's really well done um and what's cool it's you have <laughs> you have that and then you have lincoln's you know home when he worked there there's like there's like a little two or three streets that are historic that they've sealed off that you can go through and see where his house was and stuff and then you can also go to the old state capitol so that would be for central illinois that's what i would be there Yes, Pee Wee Herman does remember the Alamo. But what about the basement of the Alamo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Jim, for the for the uh, Alabama white sauce. We, we bought the Duke's Alabama white sauce, and it was not Alabama white sauce. I love Duke's mayonnaise, but no, that was no. Oh, there we go. So Henry Puffy Taco, there's where you need to go for uh, some Puffy Tacos in San Antonio. Let's see. Is there another one for me? Which U.S. would you finish off last for visiting? So the last state we'll probably go to is North Dakota. Because if you go to North Dakota and it's the 50th state you go to, they actually, there's like a t-shirt you can get. There's like a stamp you can get. Yeah. For like saving the best for last. So one of our one of our fans, Tom Shaner, he's actually, I have some Pittsburgh videos coming out next month. He That was his last state. So he went there and got all the stuff. So uh, there's that. Must do. Must. So, but first we got to get the other states you haven't been to and then get to North Dakota because we can't do a road trip to Hawaii. So, yeah. Yeah. My, Michael Traveling World says, my parents went on went on Israel. No, they're going, okay. My parents finally going to Israel next year. Everyone who went told me it's an amazing country. So good choice, Liam. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Ooh, nice. Glenn's going to Australia. Okay, any advice for ultra long flights? All right, one thing I would say if it's just if it's just for adults, one thing I would say is make sure you get up every hour or so when you're not sleeping and just walk up and down, stand by the bathroom where they have a little space and do like do some leg not leg lifts like this, but like stand on your balls to your feet. You want to keep your blood flow going because that actually can be kind of dangerous. Um, when you do those ultra long, long, high, long haul ones, like the one that the, the Wellington or Auckland to Chicago or New York ones, like the 20 hour flights, you definitely have to get up. You cannot sit that long. It is horrible for your body, your back, your legs, your veins. So get up, walk around every so often. Um, also make sure you have a USB charger 
not a USB-C because you know how this a lot of new ones are. Have a USB charger because no matter what the plug is in the plan you're going to have, that USB plug will probably be there. So you can use that to charge your device. Don't expect your device to charge fast though. Okay. But yeah, that's a, that's, that's a long flight. But um, yeah, I, I flew, I flew that LA to Sydney many years ago. And uh, I would also download some videos from uh, Netflix that you like, just so you have something. Um, because sometimes you get stuck with nothing to do. So, hey, Sue, Scorpio Sue, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Uh, booking our flight to Rome this week. You know if we can bring wine back. Do you recommend a tour for the Vatican or Coliseum? Yes, you can bring wine back, two bottles per adult um, or two bottles per ticket you can bring back. Um, what I would recommend, Sue, is try a lot of different wines while you're there. And then, like, in your notebook or actually in your phone, like, I actually have a notebook in my phone that I literally take notes about everything on, like, what we, what I filmed, where I filmed, what I like, what I ate. Have that so you can mark down what it is you try. Because a lot of the wines you had up in Italy, you'll be able to get back here. So then you know what to get when you come back home. But the ones you really liked, then I get a few bottles of those and bring those home just in case. So, Liam. Oh. Michael, travel the world again. Hey, Mark and Liam, I'm going to Munich next year. I wonder whether I should go to Nymphenburg Palace or the residence. I would do the residence um, just because since it's right downtown where everything is, you're not going out on the U-Bahn or the S-Bahn getting out farther out of town. Nymphenburg Palace is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But the residence fits easier with an itinerary. Then there's that. Let's see. Liam. Liam, how many countries have you been to? 50. 50 on countries, 50 on the dot. So we got to get, we got to get them going. We're uh, so, cause Caleb and Liam have different um, spring breaks this year. Mm -hmm. So Liam is trying to figure out how we're, we're looking for a country to get Liam to catch up a little bit close to his brother. <laughs> so let's see. Uh, are there any must see things you can think of in Germany? If you had to pick one or two, I would say if you're looking at cities, I would go to Munich if you want to get a big city because Munich's got all the traditional Germany things you think of as an American because Munich was in the American sector of West, West Germany. So that's why all the soldiers and stuff, that's why the whole, we think of the, the later Hosen and the big beers and stuff, because that's what all the soldiers saw when they were stationed there, you know, during the West Germany years. Um, that's one thing. Berlin is great as well, but Berlin's an international city. It's like when people go to New York to see the U S it's not the same thing because it's so international. I would recommend picking a place like the Hartz Mountains in Quedlinburg and Venigo Oda, or for in Munich, go to Bomberg, Nuremberg, Regensburg, something like that. that. That's what I'll probably do. So let's see if there's any more questions for Liam so he can go and play video games and hang out with other people that are way cooler than me. So you want to tell anybody anything? anything? Uh, yep. Yeah. Five more people get, get a question for me. Five more people get a question from you. Please. You want five more questions. Okay. Um, well, this one, I'll, I'll make a question out of this. Big Bob's Gibson's Lawlers and Wits are the best. Dukes is not Alabama white sauce. Would you agree? The white sauce we had from Dukes was not good. Um, I'd say that's just um, Hellman's mayonnaise, and you just put some – um, mustard in it, not not ke um crass um mustard. Yeah, yeah. Mustard. mustard. Oh yeah, yeah. So we tried the Duke's Alabama white sauce, and yesterday he was like, it was like he well, you're like it's sacrilegious or something. <laughs> Liam was not having it, but yeah. So if you're ever looking at Alabama white sauce, Big Bob's Gibson's, you actually get it at the airport, like at Huntsville. If you're flying out of Huntsville or Birmingham, they actually have it in the airport, so you can buy it before you go. All right, you're a little tired. Oh, uh, don't have any tips on on Thailand. Sorry, nothing here. Another one. Oh, look. Hello from Austin, no bourbon tonight, Liam. Go dogs. Thank them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Reggie, your man, Liam. Since you like Mexico, do you speak much Spanish? No. No. We'll get him there, <laughs> though. We'll get him there. Don't you worry. Yeah, the, the Moral to the Murdered Jews of Europe in Berlin, that's a very moving place. I actually got to go there when they just filled each building before they put the installations in. And it was just, I mean, by itself as a structure, it was insane. I've been to 50 countries. Say that again. I've been to 50. 50, yep. So, 
50. See, it's hard when it's the other direction, isn't it? See, see. So we're trying to help Liam get used to uh, his online presence for his fun stuff. Okay. Last one, Liam. It's a tough one. What is Liam dressing up for Halloween? And do they dress up in Europe as well? So, Chumbers, you can do, I'll do the second part. You do the first part. What are you going to wear? I don't know yet. Don't know yet. Well, what are some of the things you've worn before? Last year, I wore a Demogorgon thing. The year before that was. There was the Scarecrow. Yeah, the Scarecrow. I was I was unsure if it was a year between that. Yeah. Um, I think like three, two or three years before that, I had this black dragon with like red stuff. <laughs> um. Yeah, if you look up Halloween Multis World, it'll show up. <laughs> I had it for like four entire Halloweens. Three. Three. Because you had that one. But and you... but on the last one, the wing got like. Bent, then it got locked there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, then you had the green dragon suit. And then there was, I remember when you were a bumblebee when you were really little. You don't remember that one. Caleb was Wolverine one year in Captain America. Good times. Not okay. Cr I can't answer that one. I have to be. This one? Yeah. You don't want to answer that one? No, okay. I don't know how to. Oh. Because I don't have a favorite. Mexico's not your favorite country? No. Oh, it's one of your favorites. Okay, we'll do this one. Liam, do you think your dad is cool taking you traveling and being a YouTuber? Yes. Oh, his brother doesn't think that, but I'm yeah, glad he you think did. he's he's the worst person in the world. That's right. As everyone that has teenagers know, the worst person are your parents. Anyway, oh Montego Bay. Montego Bay is really nice. Um, so Liam, you want to say bye to everybody? Bye. <laughs> you tired? Sand or whatever. Sleep in your eyes. All right. Well, thank you, Liam, for joining us tonight. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Bye. Yeah, so you can always follow Liam at youtube.com slash Liam Walters. You go over there, sign, you know, sign up, and he puts out video. He usually puts about one video a month. Um, oh, Liam, I found a new one we got to try. There's cereal. They don't want you to put milk in. They want you to put water in it. What do you, what do you think about that? Who said that? No, Kellogg's, like the Kellogg cereals, they have new, like you just add water instead of milk. We'll have to try it and see. It's probably got powdered milk in it, so you stir water in it. Don't, 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 don't break yourself, buddy. <laughs> All I, right. Wait, give me your phone. I need to look it up. All right. That's, that's just that's cereal just, with water. Just actually, cereal. that would be really helpful with the cup versions. Yes, that would you be know, very. the cup versions and mm -hmm. like. Um, hotels and some airports that would be very helpful. See, that's why they made it, made it. So, we'll have to have you uh review them. So, all right, thank you, Liam, for joining us. We appreciate your helpful times. All right, all right. bye, bye, <laughs> bye, Liam. Okay, well, this is a really good question. Yes, very good question. Okay, so I get one. what's up? <laughs> I know. All right, Capri Diem, thank you for the question. What's better, Portugal or Vienna, Prague and Berlin trip? Portugal or a Vienna, Prague, Berlin trip? I would probably do the Vienna, Prague, and Berlin trip. And I, actually, what's funny is I lived five years in Portugal. Uh, I've actually taught in Vienna four different summers and studied there for a summer. And I did my master's in Berlin and spent two and a half years in Berlin. So I know all of those places. And I would probably say the Vienna, Prague, and Berlin trip would probably be if you want to get, if you're a museum person kind of thing and that, you'll get more from there. If you like the more weather laid back, chill out, relax vacation, then Portugal will be better. So, you know, it's both answers because, you know, don't want to make anybody upset. But I, I, I would honestly go to the Vienna, Prague, and Berlin. Excuse me. Let's see. My opinion on Prague, it's fantastic. Everyone should go. Um, it's one thing that I think everybody should do. Matt and Ned, hey, how are you? If you're looking for a new uh, newer travel channel, go check them out. They have some fun stuff around where they travel around the U.S. and other places around the world. So uh, they're more vivacious and way better looking. And I think I think I weigh much as both of them put together. So hey, you can have that. And though I try to have the long hair like that, my top doesn't grow like theirs does. So nice to see you on here, guys. Let's see. Uh, 
Thank you, Karen. He's he's already gone. He's got his he's got his Xbox upstairs, so he's already. He's, I was surprised he came down for this. I was like, man, could you help me out tonight? He's like, okay. So what am I drinking? So Vitor Junior, that's what I'm drinking. So I'm having a spritz apérol, which is prosecco with apérol and bubble water stirred together. So that's what I'm drinking tonight. Not really into the for some reason bourbon was not appealing to me today because like we're I know it's te, it's well, it's not technically fall yet so we're not past the twenty first we're past Labor Day and usually by now you have some cool evenings but it was like eighty five degrees today you're going outside and with a cement you're like Ugh. I went to the gym this morning I did a bike class and a lifting class came outside thinking it'll be a nice cool fall morning wrong I was like eh, eh, I feel even more dressed now so. Um, I mean, that's why I'm going something a little bit, a little bit um, more refreshing. Ooh, Brianna's going to a nice trip to Scotland. That's cool. We're visiting Scotland later April. That's nice because the, the bad weather is pretty much, the cold, cold stuff's pretty much gone by then, so you'll be okay. It's still, and the, it's starting to get lighter more, so you'll, you'll be all right there. Edinburgh, Lac Lamont, beautiful. Isle of Skye, fantastic. Book your Isle of Skye places now because that place books out early no matter when you go in the year. Inverness, yeah, Glasgow. Any tips on where to spend the most time? Um, I would say Edinburgh and then Sky, just to explore around Sky. And there's a town called Plockton right off of Sky. There's another place. If you can't find a place to stay in Isle of Sky, Plockton's a nice uh, alternative when you're there. Carmen! I haven't seen Carmen since earlier in the chat. Good to see you, Carmen. Do you have any recommendations for two, three-week language immersion programs overseas? Not set on language yet, but want to experience this. This is one of the great things. It's one thing I love. People might have complained about millennials and Gen Z, but one of the great things they've really focused on is they've changed travel from just seeing a museum to help it be more experiential. That's why I always tell people, go do a cooking class, go do a food tour, go do you know an activity tour. Language immersion classes are a fantastic opportunity. And here's the thing. You can get them anywhere around the world. Like people will go to London. They'll go to Dublin to do English. They'll come to New York to do English classes. When I lived in Berlin, there were a number of German language courses there. I actually went down to Brazil and lived on the beach for a couple of weeks and took Portuguese classes. And when I was in Buenos Aires, I took Spanish classes. So basically, once you figure out what language you want to learn, there's going to be a place for you. Like I took one week of an Italian intensive course, and it was funny because I was staying in Italy for about a month. And the first couple of weeks, I was hanging out with my buddies and kind of travel around. But like the first weekend I was there, I went to a soccer match. Okay, and I went with all my like my my buddies' friends and stuff. And I spoke no Italian. And then you know a couple of weeks around, and then I did one week intensive. And they based oh no sorry it was two weeks intensive that, that was right it was two weeks intensive. But it was supposed to have a group of people. But since no one else signed up for the basic course, I instead of getting like one semester of work, I got two semesters covered in two weeks. And so by the time I went on the next game, like, because one guy missed the next game, came for the next one. He saw me three weeks later. He's like, holy crap, you speak Italian. I'm like, eh, somewhat. So that's the great thing is you can get that. And a lot of those immersion courses, what they do is they have you take the class in the morning. So like nine to noon or nine to one. And then they say, go have lunch and go explore. And so you get a city where you can explore more and you get a chance to use the language. That really helps. So honestly, Carmen, anywhere you want to go, like when you figure out the language you want, there's going to be a place to do it for you. And what I would recommend is pay the extra money to get the private class at the school because the school will have a system they have to go through and maybe get a certificate. So if you want to start again, like someplace else, you can continue on. But um, having that private one, then you can go faster and they'll help you with that. Or, you know, like anything, like when you're on a cruise, if one person always has problems, you have their problems. So if you're on your own, you do that. Leonardo, can you do a master's in Germany and then use it to find a job in the U.S.? Yes, you can, because that's what I did. I have a master's from Germany, a PhD from Portugal, and I work at one of the top business schools in the U.S. now. So it can happen. One European country person go to, which would you recommend? Italy. I want to say France. They're like for Italy, France, or one, two, or one A, one B. Those are my two. Because the food, the culture, and the people are super nice. Even if you don't speak the language, they're so friendly to you. Um, it's just in Paris, they get that bad rep in France. Um, but yeah, yeah, that, that's that that's one thing I'd say. And again, Carmen, thank you very much for the super chat. That was really nice of you. Let's see. 
Scorpio Sue, what does Aperol taste like? It's like a bitter orange. Like not bitter, not bitter. Like it's not Campari, which is really, really bitter. There's a little bit of a bitter. It's like, oh, I, it's bitter orange, but it's sweet. It's like, this would be the sweet version of Campari would be my, my way to say it. Mmm. Sam Bridge, that's right. You were going to Ljubljana. So if you guys are looking for a hidden place in Europe that not a lot of people are going to, Slovenia is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And Ljubljana, the capital, fantastic place to visit. Incredible food because you got the Austrian food influence. You've got the Serbian influence. you got the Italian influence in the food. So, like, no matter what, you're having great food. Language, don't even worry about the language. They speak every language possible, so you'll be fine. Well worth it when you go in the mountains like Gled. You go to the caves, castles. It's just gorgeous there. Highly, highly recommend. Good point for putting that one out, Stanford Bridge. I appreciate it. Katie, how are you, Katie? Thank you very much for the super chat. Hi, Mark. Your videos on Greece were so helpful for me and my family. Had a great time in Athens and in Crete. That's awesome. I'm great. I'm so glad to hear it. Jocelyn went back for Greek Easter this year. Then her dream, like when we started talking, like talking, like, hi, what's up? Like she was talking about how much she wanted to go to Greece for Easter. And, you know, with kids, and we eventually got married, and, like, we couldn't get to Greece for Easter because it just it didn't work out. And then, like, this last year, you know, COVID happened. She's like, I just I want to get to Greece. I'm like, you got to go. You have to go. So it was weird because, like, she'd want to go. And on her way to the airport to fly there, the wheel off of our car came off. Not, not just the tire, but the entire wheel, the whole thing. Like, she probably should have flipped over and been in a horrible accident, but somehow she was looking in the rearview mirror and she just saw her tire go by on the highway, go over the side of the highway and fly over there. Luckily, no one was hurt there. And she got off the road and obviously she didn't make her flight. And so they got her on another flight the next day and everything. It's going to be a great experience for her, but it was just one of those things. She's like, should I go? I'm like, no, no, you have to go. Like, this is something you want to do. That's people trying to keep you from going. And uh, she had a wonderful time. So we'll put out. So she did because she doesn't do as many videos as I do when we film. Like I'll do like five videos a day. She'll do like five videos on a trip. So we have some like there's a, a Greek Easter video, a Greek food video. Um, and there's a few more. She's like some safety videos she made for Greece that she's going to have. And then we're going back this next summer for another month in Greece to make more Greek videos. So see more stuff coming. So thank you. I appreciate it. Kiki, okay, what are some Dominican Republic tips? All right, so one of the things you'll notice, if you go to the Dominican Republic, most of the resorts really make it so you don't want to leave the resorts. They put everything there, and most people don't leave the resorts because there is a safety issue when you're there. So I do not recommend going off the resorts by yourself. Have the resort hire you a guide, and then they'll take you out. That's going to be a lot more of a safer thing to do because there's some cool stuff to see when you go around the Dominican Republic, but really it is like most of it's like, they're trying to keep you in in the thing, just like Cancun, in terms of like they try to keep you on property. But Cancun's got more more stuff to see when you go out, so just just be aware of that. So, Kiki, if you're going to be going down there, I would say look at your resort you're going to go to, see because they'll have like a tab, like excursions kind of stuff, and maybe they have some stuff there. If they don't, you might want to call them up, like, hey, can can you help me set up private a private guide or a private driver, and that can help you out. So, let's see. Subpar nature, subpar nature documentary on expert commentary. I love that name. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Mark. I'm seriously considering Tuscany in the next three years, maybe Venice before it sinks. All those places are fantastic. Tuscany is great to go to. Actually, Tuscany, since there's a lot of tourists that go there, um, they actually have some really great like cooking schools you can go to cook, and not just like one day half day cooking class like you can sign up for a week or a two week long like cooking and language immersion course i know there was a there was a cooking school we were talking to about coming and staying and like well you stay on your own but like we were going to go and basically jocelyn would do the cooking class and i would film her with it and we'd be there for two weeks and i was like oh i have the language stuff with the kids in language school too um but that was you know covid came and sadly that kind of fell to the wayside for now but that might be something to look to in the future but that is really cool if you're going to go there that's nice oh i was seeing in the chat there's or in the chat whichever side i don't know what side you see it on i see it over here you might see it over here but um or up here or down there if you're on your phone um so i saw there's a lot of comments about learning language when you travel and it is really important like it does mean a lot for locals when you try and it's kind of like the smaller the country the more they appreciate it. Like, I can't tell you 
how many free shots and free beers and free food I got in Lithuania because I spoke some Lithuanian. And they're like, oh my God, you speak Lithuanian. This, which is like, let's get drunk. It's a kata, cheers, or sorry, it's a kata in the eyes. And uh, like, they would give you stuff all the time. And that's just it. Like, that's why, if you notice, I put out a video this week, basics of Italian. Okay. And we have basics of German coming out next Wednesday. And we've got a basics of Lithuanian coming out, I think in November. We've got a basics of French. Like we have videos we've already put out years ago on like basics French, basic Spanish, basic Portuguese, but they're so old that YouTube doesn't show them anymore. And so what I've seen is there's a lot of like language learning courses online now, like uh, learn German with Herr Antrim. Uh, Levi is a great guy, great teacher for German if you want to learn everything. But I'm like, hey, if you just want the tourist stuff, here's some things because it really does make a difference. I can't tell you how happy people are just saying like Gra grazie, which is a like, thank you in Italian. They're like, oh, no, and they'll start talking to you anyway. They're like, I don't speak Italian. Like, it's okay. You say grazie. That's close enough. It really goes a long way because you start with, do you speak English? And you might say, I said it nicely. They hear it unfriendly like. So just have a heads up for that. Okay. Ah, Justin. Good to see him. So, hey, Mark. Headed to Portugal with layovers in Ireland and Spain. How does the weather change from Lagos to Portugal? Uh, it depends on the time of year going to be there. But, I mean, it's it's a significant temperature difference. I mean, I wouldn't be – like, if you're coming from the U.S., I mean, it, you're looking like a 10, 15-degree difference sometimes, like, on a normal day. Um, that would be one thing I would definitely say. And if you go farther inland in Porto, it goes high – it goes in a higher elevation – not high elevation, but higher. And so it gets a lot wetter. Um and cooler so uh just just be aware of that one when you're there let's see i have not used ocean voyages i do not know them oh arsh gill good to see you i really want to go to sweden finland and away this summer how long do you think i need to spend over there to get the full experience okay um if you're just going to do like the capitals of the main cities this this is what i'd recommend do um, a multi-city flight. So you fly into Helsinki and out of Oslo or out of Oslo and, and into Oslo, out of Helsinki. So you don't have to track back because you'll spend a lot of money tracking back. So if you're going to fly and go fly into Oslo, we'll just go, we'll go Oslo to Finland, fly into Oslo and then stay in Oslo, see that, then go up to Bergen and see Bergen, then come back down to Oslo and you're going to get the train and you're going to get off the train in Gothenburg, Sweden, which after you've been in Norway, Gothenburg seems really cheap. Take my word for it. Gothenburg is great. We did have a dunce of Gothenburg, but unfortunately the mic didn't work. So I filmed the whole thing. By the time we I realized that, we'd already left the city. So I was like, oh. but Gothenburg is really nice. Have that. Then from Gothenburg, go up to Stockholm. If you can stop in the lakes on the way, that's nice. But time-wise, it's kind of tough. You get into Stockholm. So a few days in Stockholm. Then you can take a ferry over to Turku, uh, which is a shorter ferry. That's the old capital of Finland. I have a dunce of Turku video. Spend a day there, just relax and hit the sound and stuff. And then you go to Helsinki. I would say two full days in Oslo, one full day in Bergen, uh, full, at least a full day in Gothenburg. Two, this is the minimum. Two full, think about it, there's going to be travel in between. Two days in Stockholm, day in Turku, two days in Helsinki. Like That's the minimum you want to say to see most of the sites in those places. So you're looking at nine days of being there but if you throw in the travel with a half day in between you've got the day between bergen and there the day to gothenburg the day to stockholm the day to da, 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 da. so 14 days you'll be able to see a lot it'll be fast like you'll do a lot but it'll be worth it for sure tim thank you very much for the super chat i'm are you from belgium with the with the thing uh, hi mark any guesses about japan dropping travel restrictions visa requirements in the autumn okay so for those who know japan is actually starting to uh loosen the restrictions um that's one of the things we actually talked about last week and this well, two week, last week in our um walter's world shorts news which we do on wednesdays at noon you can go back and watch them on the walter's world shorts channel not not this one it'll probably be the next one that comes by there it is this one ding ding walter's world shorts Every Wednesday we do a live feed where I talk about travel news the first 10 to 20 minutes, and then I have a topic, and then we do Q&A afterwards. So it's about 30, 45 minutes we're on. But Japan has changed, and now you don't have to test before you come if you have been vaccinated. Like, you have to have at least three, like two plus the, the booster. Um, they still, are, you still have to be vaccinated to come. 
Um, but they are loosening it because for those who don't know, Japan basically was like, if you want to be a tourist to come here, you have to be like escorted. You have to be in like a tour group. So independent travelers still not really a thing yet. You still have to be escorted, but they're making it easier to go. And they have lightened it quite a bit compared to how it was. But like I love Japan. We weren't there a few years ago. I would go back. But I, 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 if I was booking tickets, I wouldn't look at booking to go there till like at least 2024, just because I'm not sure. Like and we, we're all we got all our stuff. Like we're fine. But I'm like, but I want to explore on my own. So they're they're much more cautious. I mean, they might be open next something next not not this fall, but maybe next fall be open. But you know, it's a lot of money to 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 shell out. I'm not sure. So let's see. Joanna, hey, Mark, I'm heading out on a semi-solo road trip to Southern California next week, LA, San Diego, Joshua Tree. You're fine. Any tips on staying safe while on the road? Thanks. Um, one thing I would say is if it's your car, I, this is for anybody. If you're going to do a road trip, go to your Jiffy Lube, go to your local mechanic, get your, your tune-up, which means get your oil changed, get your tires rotated, get your fluids. And here's the thing. When you're driving on those, those dusty roads, you get a little water on your thing it gets hard to see so fill up the the the, the blinker fluid now fill up the the windshield wiper fluid get that in there uh just make sure all your cars okay get the tire because the tires will go because like if you go to a place like a jiffy lube they'll change your oil they'll check your filters you know pay the 30 bucks 40 bucks get a new filters you know ask because i don't know if jiffy lube rotates your tires but you want to make sure remember every other oil change rotate those tires have that done check that it's okay that's going to help you out also what we do just in case there's breakdowns when we do our road trips we have a we have an emergency pack that has jumper cables, uh, flashlight, um, you know, that like European uh, orange vest. We have that. Um, that's actually one thing. Oh, thank you for reminding me because I've got to film my video on driving safe in the winter. Um, same kind of thing. Just have those things in there. I always have uh, a blanket or two in the back. If it's just you, just one blanket or whatever. But you don't want to have anything out. Like, I don't know what kind of car you're driving, but if you have a car, you want to put all that stuff in the trunk so no one sees it because if it's out, it becomes a target. Okay. So somebody kind of think about it. Heidi Hall, do you recommend air tags for luggage track with all the airport craziness? Yes, I do. I actually bought a top. I bought, I bought two. I've got a tile. I've got a Samsung tag and I've got an AirPod. and I'm actually flying down to San Antonio and I'm actually gonna put all three in the same piece of luggage and see how they track and see what, what the difference is. Uh, so that's something not when I go there, when I come back home, cause it's not there. Well, I'm, my house is here so I can get clean underwear. Uh, so I'll be doing things there. Um, but that's one thing, um, I would do one thing I would say, if you have, uh, if you do not have an apple, do not get an air tag because it's so much easier. If you have an apple with the air tags, they're really great. If you have an apple, get air tags. But the thing is those air tags don't have like a little hook. So you can't like put it on a keychain. You can't put it on something. You have to buy another $30 holder. And you're like, really? Really, Apple? I know you like us buying all these extra cords, but come on. Uh, so that's why the Samsung one is like a fob with a key key fob kind of thing you can put on there. And the Tile one too. Tile has a lot of difference. Tile has ones that are like a credit card that can go in your wallet. Or there's little smaller ones you can get. One thing you have to realize, if you get those trackers, um, like AirPods, if you don't, if you're not near it for like, if your phone's not near for like three days or four days, it actually starts beep, 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 beeping. So that it's like a safety thing. So people can't use it to track people to their house. Um, so that's one thing. It's like the spider tracer for Spider-Man that he used to have. So. Rose, have we ever been to Africa? Yes. Uh, wonderful time. Tunisia, Morocco, Rwanda, Tanzania. We got plenty of videos in all those places to help people travel. All well worth visiting. Um, we're hopefully going to be back in Ethiopia and Egypt this coming summer. So fingers crossed. Everything will go well. Um, so we'll do that. Ah, I don't know everybody went. Everything just jumped. Downfall parodies one. Thank you for the super chat. Would you ever travel to North Korea? Uh, no, I would not. Um, because one, I know some travel vloggers have gone there, but I, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I mean, they're single without a family to support and not every travel that's gone there has come back and I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. You know, it's one of the things people ask, like, they ask jokingly, but in seriousness, like, I look where the planes I'm going to go. Like, I'm not going to fly over a war zone. I'm not going to fly near a war zone. I, you know, like, because there's horrible things that happened. The KLM flight, that got shot down over Ukraine a few years ago. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, like, there's no guarantee. Like, crazy stuff happens everywhere. But, like, that's one of the things. Like, look, I'm not going to take a chance with that. Now, now, let's say my kids are out of college. You know, they're, like, in their 20s and stuff. 
you know, like, oh, dad's gone. Oh, well, I like, guess it's a little bit different. But now when they're little, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not, I mean, I take enough chances being a fat guy. I don't need to take any more chances uh, with that. So, so there's that. As Leah says, please don't. Oh, yes, yes, please do do click that like button. We really appreciate it. It does make a difference. Also, if you want to follow some of our other channels, I actually, for those who don't know, I'm actually a business professor, a marketing professor um, at my day job. And so I actually do marketing and business videos and social media marketing videos on Professor Walters. So we have that there. So other fun stuff. Okay, Daniel wants to know, best beer hall in Berlin, bar in Berlin, if you're feeling adventurous, best club. So, Daniel, it's been too long since I was clubbing in Berlin because that, that stuff changes so fast. Um, it's been too long. Like, last time I was in Berlin was 19? 2019. So, you know clubs. They change too fast. Beer hall. Don't expect beer halls in Berlin. Beer, Berlin is not a beer hall place. Berlin is a club place. Like, there's going to be tons of clubs. You're going to find lots of good clubs. Don't worry about that. But, um, yeah, beer hall, they don't do that. They're, they're more they're more like you go have cocktails in, in different neighborhoods kind of stuff. That would be the thing you want to do. You want to find wherever the, the new hip neighborhood is to go have cocktails. That's where you go in Berlin. Okay. Um, oh, Klansman. Uh, hi, Mark. Your favorite place for beers in the world, Germany or Czech Republic? They're both great. Lithuania also has great beer. Um I would say from those three, those are the ones, those are the ones that I, that I would go for. EI, thank you very much for the super chat. Any advice for Chile, Argentina, Uruguay going for three weeks? Just got back from Germany, Norway, Sweden. Highly recommend, but just very expensive place, Norway. Yes, I am with you on that one. Norway is gorgeous, but my goodness, my wallet still hates me, and it's been a few years. So if you're going to go to Chile, Argentina, Uruguay. Okay, so Uruguay... You can see it relatively quickly because there's three main spots you want to go, depending on what time of the year you're going to go. Because if it's not beach weather time, you're going to two places. Um, you're going to take, you're going to be in Buenos Aires, and you're going to take the ferry over, the the hydrofoil over, and you're going to go to Colonia. Colonia is a UNESCO World Heritage Site city. We have a video on it that can go through what you need to do when you're there. You're going to spend at least one full day there because you're going to get in on the ferry. There's multiple a day that'll get you from Buenos Aires. I would spend probably two nights there at least just to take in all the stuff, walk around, see the sights, but relax when you're there. Then you go to Montevideo. There's buses that will take you from Mont to Montevideo, no problem. You spend two or three days there, see the market, see the main squares, see the museums that are there, the cathedral, you have that. that that's the main stuff you see in Uruguay, and you eat meat. You eat a lot of meat when you're there. Um, then when you're in Argentina, it depends where you want to go because Buenos Aires has a lot to see, but you want to see other things when you're there. If you go down to Patagonia, yes, you can do the export. You go to Puerto Madryn, which is this little peninsula, and you can see the whales, the penguins. Or you can go inland in Bar to Bariloche, which is like mountain hiking or skiing if you want that. Um, and then if you're going to Chile, so if you go to the north of Chile, you have the Atacama Desert, which is super dry. That's where like the huge – like. Uh, um, astronomy guys have their their telescopes and you can see that where those are but going up there like la serena is pretty but you have up there like laguna colorada you can go into bolivia from there too on like beach tours if you want but santiago santiago is a nice town to go to i went there a few times uh, 10 15 years ago um cool city but uh, empanadas in chile are like the bomb but be careful because they don't pit the olives that are in there so you're like oh, ow my tooth so be careful with that um but you can go like Valparaiso and uh, Vina del Mar. You can go. Vina del Mar is nice. You can go and see, watch the sunset. That's really pretty. Water is ice cold when you're there. If you're going to go down and you're going to take like go through the kind of Patagonia of Chile, you're going back and forth across the border a lot. So have some extra st like spaces for stamps in your passport. So, John, Mark, do you have any plans for Israel soon? So last two trips got canceled because that funny thing that happened last few years. So we, hopefully it's supposed to be this summer. So if not this summer, well, summer next year, then it'll be Thanksgiving the year after. So, or not this thing, next Thanksgiving. Ah. Justin, when are you coming to Australia? When we have enough time for the kids to take them down there. Because I don't want to go in our summer and have your winter. Because when I was an exchange student there, I had I went there for July or June, July, August ish, and I'm like, I want to go during the summertime. So that would be like a December, January trip. So still got some time for that one. Woo, Caro, my goodness. 
I'm going on a cruise out of Tampa in January 2023, but I'll be flying from Honolulu. Do you have any tips with planning my flight? Okay, so January, if you're later January, because I'm going to warn you all right now, all that craziness we had this summer at the airports, you're going to have it again at, at Christmas time because of all the people that travel during the Christmas holiday. So be ready for that. Have patience. What I would say with this, I don't know what your connections are like because um, I don't know if there's a direct there's, – there, there might be a direct Honolulu-Tampa flight. I don't know. Um, but give yourself uh, – since you're domestic, you just assume, just assume you're going to have an hour delay. Just assume you have an hour delay. So if you got over an hour and a half on your flights, you got two hour layover or more, you should be okay. Um, one thing I would say though is for anybody taking cruises, you need to plan on getting to the cruise a day earlier. Don't plan it like a rot like landing at eight in the morning and then go straight to the cruise ship. You need to get there the night before now because they're not going to wait for you, and it's going to cost you a lot of money to catch up with it, or you're just going to lose your money. So have an idea with that. Uh, Desia, hi, Mark. And he suggested where to eat a good, really good paella in Valencia. There's actually a lot of places you get really good um, paella in Valencia. That's where it's really one of the big places it's from. And they do a good job. And the thing that's great there is there's so many good paella places that you don't get sucked into, like, the tourist microwave paella stuff. Because, like, if you're in Madrid or Barcelona, you'll see, like, a big board that has, like, 20 different paellas on it. Just know that you don't want those. You want a place that's a really paella place. Um Actually, this sounds silly, but Yelp, not TripAdvisor, but Yelp. Look on Yelp's re recommendations for Paya in Valencia. You will find some places. And Valencia is great. We got a 511 Hates. I filmed what took some students there a few years ago. Valencia is awesome because you got the beach. You got the Art Deco stuff downtown. The the the, the When you're doing your tapas there, yeah, you're, you're going to love it. Valencia is amazing. The, the science center there, I mean, you're going to love that. Anything I need to know about Warsaw, Poland? Okay, so Warsaw... I used to work there a lot and the historic part, the entire city got destroyed. So when you go to the historic center, it's only from like 1946, 45, but they were meticulous in redoing it. So you have that, you want to see that. That's, I mean, that's like a day, honestly, just to see that. And then you've got the resistance museum, the, the Warsaw resistance museum, which talks about how they were fighting you know, the Nazis and stuff like that's a really good museum to go to. It's, it's out of the center. You got to take a taxi or an Uber there. Uh, I would do that. Like that, that would be my best thing. You don't need a ton of time because honestly, like the, the, the Germans wiped this city, like they just destroyed everything. So that's really sad. Oh, Jenny's going to be in Paris on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Any tips? Watch out for the fireworks. That's all I'm going to tell you. People will be throwing fireworks all over the place. You got to watch out for that, okay? Jet lag tips. Yes, Coca-Cola, dark chocolate. Uh, dried cherries, all those in different ways can help you either sleep or stay awake. Um, like the dried cherries help you fall asleep. Your melatonin, talk to your doctor about that, can help you fall asleep to get back on track. You don't want to, like, if you have a flight that gets you in early in the morning, like eight in the morning, you did not sleep on the flight. Do not, like, take maybe a one hour nap, but nothing more. Because you sleep like three hours, you're going to be messed up your entire trip. Stay up as long as you can. Stay up at least till seven o'clock at night. Go see sites. Go walk around. Eat some food. You'd be like, I'm a zombie. Then six, seven o'clock, then okay, eat something, go back to your hotel and go to sleep at 7 a.m. Yeah, you woke up at five or five in the morning, but hey, you know what? You're gonna be back on a system, so that's gonna help you a lot. Okay. Is this my full-time job? No, it's not. My full-time job is a professor. So, and that's where you can learn my professor stuff here. If you look up Professor Walters, ding 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 on Walters or YouTube or on YouTube, youtube.com slash professor walters. So we have that. Let's see. Okay, so in Morocco, I want to tell you, in terms of Tangiers, be careful in the market. That's that honestly, Morocco is pretty safe, but that's where you're going to get the most likely to get your pick, your pocket picked when you're in in Morocco. Have that Chef Shawan, uh, that's the blue set, the blue town. Um, just you're gonna actually, you don't have to fight the Instagrammers as much now because it really kind of peaked in its popularity in 2018, 19. Um, and it's kind of died off now because everyone got their blue city picture. So, I mean, seeing the blue, blue city is beautiful, but you also like to do other things. So if you're going to be going, sign up for some cooking classes because that's pretty cool. How learn how to, to cook in the tagines, the, the pots you'll see there, the clay pots. That's really cool. For those who don't know, Sarah and I have the same affliction. I also cannot fall asleep on a flight. If I fall asleep, if I get a half hour sleep on a 10-hour flight, I'm happy. I'm like, oh, I fell asleep for a bit. 
I, I, I didn't get to watch the whole episode of Beat Bobby Flay. I only watched like five minutes of it. Like, it makes you proud. So, <laughs> let's see. So, is Nicaragua safe? I've heard Managua can be dangerous. Managua, yes, Managua is dangerous. Um, I know when we went there, we did not go to Managua. We went to San Juan del Sur and Granada. Granada, we love with these letas. Right now, Nicaragua is a little bit more. It's not like what it was back in the day, but it's not as safe as it was when we were there a few years ago. Um, but I would not do Managua. Um, and you'll notice if you fly into Managua, it's really expensive. A lot of people, what they do is they actually fly into northern Costa Rica for like one third of the price. And then they just take a bus up or a, a private driver and do that. David, what's a good region in Italy that isn't so touristy, not so crowded? Okay, so <laughs> none. <laughs> Really? If you're going during the holiday season? Uh, Corsica, sorry, Sardinia, Sardinia, Corsica's France. Uh, Sardinia used to be pretty empty, pretty easy to go to, but this year it became very popular because that's where a lot of Europeans went to not deal with all the tours, international tours that were coming into Europe and seeing the big sites. Um, but I would say I like Puglia. And Puglia is really popular for Italians in like july and august so but if you're not going in july and august i, I really recommend puglia bari is really nice matera Parra, albero bello uh Pugnani, Pugnani we got videos coming out for those actually on our shorts channel next month we've got like a quick video on what to see in matera which is like the stone city it's fantastic one of the oldest continually had inhabited cities in the world um and albero bello we got another shorts on that we got a done of bari Day trips from Bari, don't some Pugliano Amare. So we got some stuff that'll help you out with Puglia. On Walter's World Eats, there'll be an Eats of Puglia video to help you out. So all kinds of stuff. Oh, Dulcia, thank you very much for the super chat. You're very welcome and safe travels to you as well. So let's see. <laughs> Michael, any new British videos given that the Queen died? Rest in peace, long live the King. So um Here's the thing. If you put out videos that relate to anybody that died or anything where there's an attack, YouTube will demonetize your video and not share them. Um, I put out a video. I, like, it was like Wednesday or Tuesday. I put out a video about France. There was one of the terrorist attacks were on that weekend. I got flagged from YouTube saying you're trying to take advantage of a, a horrible situation. The base was like, you're trying to take advantage of this horrible situation. I'm like, I put it up at, at, before this happened. So that's why I like I have I have a couple of Scotland videos left, but I don't have the UK like London videos or England videos. Jocelyn's going to England relatively soon. And she's going to be filming there, and I'm going again later in the fall. So I'll be having more stuff, but I don't have anything coming out for the Queen or anything like that, just because I don't have anything new. Um, but uh, I will have some new stuff. But yeah, for the Queen stuff, that was very sad. Like I I dated a girl from England for a number of years, so I, England's very close and dear to my heart. I have a friend of mine. One of my best friends, he was at my wedding. I, I actually officiated his wedding um, in uh, Spain, and he's lived there for 20 years, and I've gone stayed his house. Like, people ask me, where, where should we stay in London? I'm like, I, I don't know. I've stayed with my buddy Dave for the last 20 years going to see him there. So, sorry. Jim and Harriet, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate it. So, Mallorca and Ibiza. So, I have not been, one, because – I, got, I went to the Canary Islands and I was so turned off by all the Swedes and Germans and mostly Swedes and Germans that were there. That I was like, this is nothing Spanish about this. It really turned me off that when they talk about Mallorca, they call it the Zipsente Bundesland, the 17 German state. Cause so many Germans used to go there that it really, I just like, I don't want to go. I'd rather go see some other places. Ibiza was the big party Island back when I was back when I was my party days. So if you wanted to go party and rock it out not rock it out, like club it out, Ibiza was a fun time um, that I would say for, Summer Europeans, Ibiza is, or at least was, the party place to be. Um, it's like they're not their Vegas, but their party part of basic Vegas. So there is that. But thank you very much for the super chat, Jim and Harry. I appreciate it. Let's see. East, Sarah's going to East Canada. Any suggestion for East Canada? We're going to two weeks: Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec, and PEI. Yep, that's awesome. This try happened because we got half tickets. Yeah, yeah, we had tickets to go see hockey in Montreal. Let's do a road trip for like 2,000 miles. Okay, one thing you'll notice, the moose signs get get smaller. They, they are, so they get bigger as you get close to PEI. There's, not, there's no moose on PEI, but there might be one on the bridge that when you're going over to the island. Um, we actually did that exact trip the other direction. Fantastic trip. One thing I will tell you, 
anytime you get a chance to fill up on gas, once you get past, because like you're going to go Toronto and there's Ottawa, but in between there, there's Kingston. That's a nice little stop. I like Kingston a lot. That's a place to stop on the way. Thousand Islands is along the way too. You'll see that really pretty. Um, Montreal is cool, but I like Quebec City significantly more. Like I would put more time in Quebec City than Montreal, but you have the games. So that's kind of tough. Maybe they'll bring the Nordiques back and you can see Quebec's Nordiques game. Uh, there's that. It is kind of a long drive between Quebec City and PEI. So you're going to stop somewhere along the way. But honestly, anytime you see a gas place, especially once you leave Quebec City, you're going toward the east. Anytime you get a chance to fill up, um, throw a couple of blankets in your car too, just in case. So and be safe. Have fun. Yeah, yeah, Ushuaia and Ibiza was awesome. Hotel for parties, famous. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, you know, like, that's just it. Like, that's a place, like, you go when you want to go have a good time back in the day, man. That's how it was for me. Favorite thing about Maine, Acadia National Park. Uh, it is probably one of the prettiest national parks we have in the United States. With the coastline that's there, the little hikings you can do, the big hikings you can do, it's well worth it. Um, I have a shot. I didn't, We. I, it's funny. If there's a place I, I know I'm not going to get back to again relatively soon, I'll try to do every video I can. But Maine, I, I like to go back to. And so we were there this time. I did a video for an RV company. Um, that's our RV resort, Don't RV Resorts uh, company with Sun Outdoors. And then we were in Portland, and we were because we were in, we were I were in Maine for a little while. We have been in Maine a lot of times over my life. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do the don'ts of Maine. I'm going to do the shocks of Maine because then I have to come back. And do the don'ts of Maine. So it gave me a reason to come back to Maine because I really enjoy going there. So let's see. Sarah, my boyfriend was Arrow Bars. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's one thing. People, okay, if you're looking for gifts to give people when you're going to come back home, honestly, um, don't buy them stupid souvenirs they're going to throw away in six days. Go buy buy a bunch of candy. Like, and not don't go to the duty free candy because most of the time that's stuff they get at home except for total around. Go to like the kiosk down the street from your hotel and just walk through and anything you don't recognize, just grab it and give it away to your friends when you come back or their kids. Cause they're like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, because like send a postcard, buy some candy. That's the best way to do it. Kyle's asking, my Mark, which country would you recommend for a first time visitor to Africa? Um, I would say Morocco, Rwanda, or Tanzania. Those would be my three. Just because of the travel distance, the safety stuff, and sights to see, those are my three ones to watch. Ah, Jackie, just rewatched your Savannah video. Can't wait to return for Thanksgiving. We have a reservation at the old pink house. Oh, nice. Yes, that's cool. Yeah, we're going. So those of you who know, Johnson lived in Savannah for a number of years. Um, actually, our oldest son was actually born in Savannah. So he's a Savannah boy. That's why you always see her them cheering for the George Bulldogs. I'm an Illinois guy, so ILL. That's how I roll. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, like, we're going back down next month. I think next month we're going back. We always have a good time when we're there. But Savannah's got great food, man. No matter where you go, you can have a good time. And Thanksgiving, if you go there, during Thanksgiving, they light up. There's, like, a boat parade on the river. So if you go down to River Street, ask them when the boat parade is. That's, like, their Thanksgiving Day parade. But it's not Thanksgiving. It's, like, the Friday, I think. And it's, um, it, it's like, they're, like, hey, Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade. But it's all boats going. They're all lit up. That's really nice. Like, Ask your hotel or your or, – oh, yeah, so you can um, – they'll, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. Philip, do I have any content Eastern European countries? You obviously don't watch our videos. Yes, I have stuff on Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. It depends where you draw the line. Uh, Russia, um, I mean, do you – Poland is more Central Europe. We got Poland videos. We got Czech videos. We got Hungary videos. Um, we got former Yugoslavia videos. I do not have the Ukraine videos. Um, I've been to Belarus, um, but I, that was before the Walters World days. Um, so it was a very interesting time. They actually, two girls just happened to follow my friend and I and want to show us around for the entire time we're there and then tell us how wonderful Lukashenko is and how the West is stealing all the mines there by lying to them. It was quite an interesting experience, let me tell you. Um, yeah. Joan Diaz, Mark, you recommend renting a car in Lisbon? Hell no. Hell no. No, no parking, and they drive like little rally drivers. So no, taxis will be enough rally driving you'll need. Okay, public transportation's there. If you're flying in, the subway goes from the airport into town. You'll be all right. So, yes, Danny, I agree. Savannah is definitely one of the funner cities. Boston, yeah, Boston, Boston is another great city. That's what's funny is 
you know, if I think back when I was a kid, Boston was a place a lot of people wanted to go to. But over the years, it's kind of lost some of its luster because people are looking at other places. But if you want culture and really good food and, and history, Boston's got a fun time. And if you can get to a game, yeah, whether you're Celtics, the Bruins, actually you go to hockey games there, it's really fun. Um, it, it's worth going to. Michael, thank you very much for the super chat. Head to London, Paris, and Zurich all the way through Italy on Tuesday. Awesome. You will have a fun time, my friend. Uh, we got videos in London, Paris, and all kinds of stuff in Italy. Uh, I just put out some Switzerland stuff, but it was more general Switzerland, but it'll it'll work for Zurich. Um, go to Bahnhofstrasse. That's like the fancy shopping street there. Just window shop because your wallet, you can buy the stuff cheaper other places, but the Swiss really have stuff. Also, don't expect the Swiss to be friendly or nice. Just telling you right now. People always get mad at me. Like, you say everybody is so friendly. I'm like, oh, no, if I don't say they're friendly, there's a reason why I didn't say they're friendly. Ding. So Xavier asked me, do you know Gus won the go? I, I don't think so. But, you know, it's it's the internet. So maybe I know them by their real name, you know, Jocelyn Examen. I, I don't know. I don't know. So Michael, yeah, never felt so American other place except DC. Oh, uh, you've seen them all? Okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Ah, uh, yes. Lobster rolls, my cousin on the harbor in Boston. Yes. You can't go wrong with the lobster rolls there. Well, anywhere in the New England, the lobster rolls. Even if you're not in, like, even in your New Hampshire, which only has, like, this much coastline, you can still get great lobster rolls. It's amazing. And for those who don't, you can get cold lobster rolls or hot lobster rolls, and both of them are equally amazing. It's just kind of what you want. But I will say, if you have any kind of shellfish issues or dairy issues, do not get the hot one with the hot butter on it because your tummy's going to have some trouble. Just saying. Just from a friend. From a friend, I'm just telling you. Oh, can you do me a favor? Please hit that like button if you're if you're watching. Because um, I haven't done it. I mean, I do my lives on Wednesdays now. Wednesday at noon on Walter's World Shorts. Um, that's where we put the vertical videos because people. I don't want to put the vertical videos with our with our long form videos. And so, I, I mean, I still do occasional lives here on Walter's World, but for the Walter's World Shorts, that's where we put like I do the the travel news on Wednesdays, and then we put some shorts out during the week. And then if I have any. Like travel videos that like we go to a place that, you know, it's, there's not enough stuff here to make a don'ts list or a 10 shocks list. That's where they're going to live. So like if we do a review, like last week I put a review out on the Palanga Airport in Lithuania. It's a little tiny airport. I'm like what about that? I have one coming out I think next week on a flight review. Like that goes there. We've got, excuse me, uh, what to do when you're in Matera, uh, which is a town in Italy. If you watch the latest James Bond, that's where his funeral is, where he died because you know there's never going to be another James Bond movie, right? Uh, that was there. I'm going to Alberto Bello. Um, actually, I'm putting a old. I thought so. I've been going through our our hard drives lately, and I've been finding some of their old videos that I didn't make back in the day. Because for those who don't know, like I make a ton of videos when I film, and when I do that, like they kind of stock up. But I know if I put, I, I found this out. If I put two videos from the same country back to back, it's fine. But once I put a third one out, people are like, okay, I've got enough of Switzerland. Stop. You know, so it's kind of funny. They really are like, nah, dude, we're done. We're done. Stop this. So it's like I'll do like two videos like the beginning of the month, maybe two more at the end of the month. But I might have made six or seven videos at that destination, like the city, the country, the food. And then I like kind of put it to the side, but then another country comes in. And then sometimes they kind of fall through the cracks. So I've been finding some of the fall through the cracks ones. So they're going to be – some of those are going to be popping up. So there's one, a uh, – uh, the original don'ts of Spain when I used to only do like five don'ts or something, we'll go on the Walter Rose shorts. Cause I'm going back to Spain next year. I'm going to be teaching there. And then I'm going to do the, the big don'ts like the, the longer edition um, for that. So that'll be coming out, but it's kind of funny. I was like, Oh, and like today. Okay. So I have today, literally before I was started this, I was looking through my hard drive. I'm like, that's a one gigabyte file. So I don't know a gigabyte. Like it's a big file. Like that means it's a video. I'm like, click hey hey guys mark here with walters i mean it's so cringe but i'm like like i don't have a ponytail it's just like my hair is like to here you know kind of like longish hair and liam's like comes up and jumps on me he was like i don't know two or three at the time i think it was three and it was like what's the scene doing chica i'm like oh man we, we gotta do this and like i didn't have any b-roll i just had pictures so i'm like putting those together i'm like all right we gotta figure out how to use that so that that will probably show up on I don't think that'll show up on Walter's World. That'll show up on Walter's World shorts. So, 
It's fun to find some of those old ones. So Sarah, do you review airlines? So I haven't before. Um, and because my one of my things with my reviews is because things change so much. I don't want to put on the Walters World channel because the Walters World channel is like, I want these videos to help you out. That's why, I mean, you can watch our videos from 10 years ago. They're still going to help you. That's why I don't say a restaurant or hotel. I'm like, hey, here's the sites. Here's the culture stuff. Because as much as cultures change, they don't change that much. You know, so a lot of it helps. So I want to make sure that if you find a Walters World video, it's going to help you no matter when. So that's why I kind of stayed away from the review stuff. But now with Walters World Shorts, that's where those reviews are going to be. So like airport reviews, um, flight reviews, air, like airplane, airline reviews, or air like flying on the 747 to Paris. You know, this is what it's like. Uh, I'll probably do some of those. Not not all the time because those ones I always sometimes – it's weird. Like I'll stand in, like with a tripod in the middle of a busy intersect – not an intersection, but, you know, with all the people who are there and – I'll do my, no problem whatsoever. Don't feel embarrassed, nothing. But if I'm like reviewing a place or talking about that, I'm like, oh, well, they only have one bathroom for everybody. And there's like 50,000 people that use this airport every day. I don't know if there's a line, if you're going to go. Like, I feel weird doing that. So, but that will be something we will have. A uh, place to recommend for someone who doesn't, doesn't enjoy nature. Okay, so Europe. Or, or big cities in the U.S. Because, Nate, like, South America, th this is why I like, like, the Caribbean, Central America, and South America, if you're a family, those are the best for kids because there's a lot more outdoor activities, not museum, church, square, town hall. Um, you have a lot more chances for outdoor activities uh, when in those places, Southeast Asia as well. Um, that, but, like, if you just want, like, culture kind of stuff, China, Japan, Europe, yeah, that's, that's going to be some stuff you want to do. Sutterx, would you recommend going to Ireland during winter? Yeah, I've gone during the winter. Um, they do get snow. It does get cold. It's just the, the, Actually, the only bad thing about it is it gets just dark really early because it's so far north. So you, if you're okay like seeing sights when it's dark, then it's totally fine. It's just the driving. Get your driving done earlier in the day so you're not driving in the dark. Because one of the fun things that Irish kids like to do is move the street signs. <sighs> so make sure you get the GPS. Katie, yes, Ireland's great in April. You'll be fine. Uh, let's see. Andrew Curry. Hey, Mark. Hello, Andrew. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on famous travel writer Rick Steves? You know, I'll give it to Rick. If you want to get a guide, go to your local bookstore, go to your library, and look in the back of his books for the guides in the city you want to go to. He has some of the best guides you can get. Also, he does a good job of finding non, like, chain restaurants and non-chain hotels. Like, he top-notch there. His maps are worthless. This map's always pissed me off. That's why if you look behind me, there's not really too many Rick Steves because the maps. It's just the maps that really bother me. But I think what he's done really well is he's made Europe available for so many people for so long that you don't understand the impact he has. Like People feel more comfortable traveling because he's like, hey, here's what you need to see. Here's something you should think about. It's really well. Another one I really like um, because Rick – Focuses mostly on Europe. I mean, he's got like Iran and Israel. He's got some other stuff that not really like in Europe, Europe. Um, but if you want some travel scope, Joseph Rosendo from Travel Scope, he has a PBS show. That guy has no shame, like not no shame, like Instagram is no shame, but no shame. Like he doesn't have a problem. He's like, oh, they want me to dance the 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 local dance, and he'll get out there and he'll try the dance. And he's just such a good guy. Like we ended up going to Rwanda because we watched his show in Rwanda, and I'm like, that was the best experience we had. So it's very nice. So, Michael, I don't teach I, – well, I guess I didn't really teach in Spanish. I taught in Portuguese. I taught in Lithuanian. I taught in German. I ha I used to do some Spanish videos for, like, learning, like, business stuff in Spanish. But I don't do it anymore now. So. TJ, J-Man, I want to go somewhere in Africa. I'm thinking Rwanda, Zambia, Zimbabwe, or Ghana. What countries would you recommend? I would do Rwanda and Tanzania. I would do those two. That would be my recommendation if you're looking someplace to go. So that would be my thing. Let's see. Lindy has a very good question. Going to Italy in May, should I buy euros before leaving the U.S.? No. Um, you can get some. Ask your bank. Give them enough time. They'll get euros for you. But what I find the best is use your home bank debit card to take out money from an ATM when you go to Italy. 
And if they ask you, would you like the conversion? You always say no. And they're like, but we're guaranteeing your exchange rate. They're ripping you off. Don't ever do it. Okay. You say, no, no, I'll take it in euros. Same thing at restaurants. That's going to be your best. But if you want to have some money before you go, Lindy, you can talk to your um, bank. They can get you a couple hundred euros. Like when we travel, I always make sure when I leave Europe, I always have a couple hundred euros with me because since I do these travel videos, like we usually travel quite a few times a year over there. So I like to have some backup money for a place I'm going to go just in case. Like, you know, like this last year, I was in Europe, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 days before Jocelyn and Liam came. And I want to make sure because she has cash. Right? She had a, I left a couple hundred euros with her. So like, then I know they can get to their apartment or they can get to their hotel and they got enough money for food just in case. So they like your, because we had one of our fans, they, they came into, they flew into Rome, knew about the, the, the pickpockets and they took the train in from Rome then took the Metro to their hotel and they got robbed there. Like literally within five hours, no, two hours of landing, they were already gone. So that's one of the things you got to think about. So, no, you do not need a national driver's license if you're driving in Ireland. If you're from the U.S., you are very welcome. Thank you very much. Um, is it true that Copenhagen restaurants charge you 3% extra for foreign cards? Um, I didn't notice that when I was there. Um, they might change that for any credit card. But it's not a Danish bank card because even here where I live now, they're like, if you pay cash, it's 3% less because that's the fee so that they're losing out on. Yeah, Mike's talking about using Capital One. Yeah, so your debit card or your credit cards, make sure there's no international transaction fees because that can be 3% out and on to every purchase you make. So check those things. Oh, Mandy, good night. Good morning, Mark. I need to tap out. It's 2.30 oh, a.m. in the UK right now. You have a good night, Mandy. Thanks for being on here. I appreciate you. You're very welcome for the content. I appreciate it. That's very nice of you. Thank you, everybody. So let's see. I'll scroll back through and see if we got some other questions. There's lots of, there's so many questions. So is there a Ghana? So I had a friend of mine who ran a hotel in Ghana for a number of years. Um, and every time we had a chance to go over there, that's when he would go back to Italy and visit his family. I'm like, dude, you're killing me. You're killing me, Nando. <laughs> let's see. Do -do -do. Okay, so bookishly that tips for picking non-abusive, exploitive animal tours or experiences, horseback riding, not wild animals. So this is one of the things. One, look at look at what you're doing. Is that a domesticated animal or is a wild animal that they're just forced to do stuff? That that's one thing that it's very much a judgment thing for people. Because some animals they don't care. Like, yeah, fine, jump on. I don't care. Other ones are like, dude, why are you doing this to me? You know, like I wouldn't feel right hopping on an elephant because I'm an elephant size myself. It's like, oh, you put a baby elephant next to me. We're about the same size. You know, so that would be one thing to look at. But also I think it's what's important is read the reviews on multiple sites about different excursions you go on because people tend to be good at like explain like hey they, they treated the animals well they're taken care of or versus like oh my god it was a horrible experience what do they do with the, the animals that can kind of help you out with that so uh my computer is freezing sorry so ho hopefully i'm still online <laughs> oh wait i got a message <laughs> it's probably someone saying you crashed offline oh five messages who the hell's writing me five messages Oh, okay. <laughs> it's the neighbors. They're just saying hi. I'm like, okay. I was like, my house burning down? I don't know about. All right. Let's see. Do -do. So, James, your first video that I saw was in Jackson, Wyoming. So, that would be, yeah, the, the Don'ts of Jackson. Was it Shocks of Jackson or the Don'ts of Jackson? Yeah, that's also it's, Jackson Hole is the area, folks. Jackson Hole is not the city. Jackson is the city. And oh my God, Jackson is expensive to stay at, especially if it's in season. Whoo, dog. No. It's crazy. Thank you, Brad. I appreciate it. I'm glad I can make some content that's helpful for you. So, our car rentals coming down in price any day soon. Or they will. Um, you have a lot of people that are now defaulting on their car payments for the new cars they bought. So they're getting repossessed. So you have a lot more used cars coming on the market. So it's not as, uh, it's not, it doesn't pay off as much to sell off your fleet anymore as it did when pandemic came and you had to get rid of your fleet to pay your bills. So I think prices will start, you're going to start seeing the prices coming down for rental cars. Um, but you know, like anybody, if I don't have to lower the price, why should I? Cause you, it's, it, it's, it's basically we're, we're coming out of the summer season now. And so now it's the low season. Like, 
if I look at my videos, my video views are, they're literally half what they were in June because people aren't traveling now, you know, and people now are, I don't think I'd say they're scared to travel, but with all the airline problems and everything, people are kind of like wary. And so they're kind of like, I don't know if I want to travel. So then they're not looking up travel stuff. So that kind of helps because then there's less people going, there's less demand, less people looking because they look and see, man, we got like 50 people look about renting a car from this destination. We can look, we can, we can play with the price a little bit. So it's interesting. It's interesting to see the marketing principles play out in the tourism industry. Um, because that's one thing that is so fickle that you can really see. I mean, the, if we look at influencers, you'll notice, well, COVID changes a bit, but before COVID, you would have different countries or regions or cities that would really want people to come to their country or really come to their city. And so what they do is they'd hire, you know, they'd have like 10 to 12 influencers come. You'd have po a podcast or you'd have, you know, two or three in like uh, YouTubers, two or three Instagrammers, two or three TikTokers. They'd all come and they do like the, the grand tour. So it's like a week or 10 days to show them all the, you know, all of Georgia or all of, you know, Kazakhstan or all of Zimbabwe or whatever. And so all of a sudden you see all this content. And the thing is a lot of these people, they only make like one or two videos when they go on these things. Like I make a ton of videos when I go to place, but yeah, but they're, they're like, look, I'm going to pay, I'm going to make their one video or their two videos and they'll make that. So all of a sudden you'll see like, wow, it's like, I saw a lot of videos on Tajikistan or Kazakhstan, you know, like that's really weird. Like how, why is it? They're there, they're there, they're there. And then I saw this on Instagram. It's because it's a coordinated marketing effort to get people to talk about it and that can help out. So and it was, and I understand why people, places do that because you never think about it. I mean, Barcelona, nobody thought about going to Barcelona before the 92 Olympics. Now everyone thinks about going to Barcelona first, you know, and so you see how that impact can happen. Thomas Reiser, I'm glad you got to Fairbanks, my friend. I read your sister's article this morning. Nice. Night, Carmen. Oh, Cooper, I'm going to text for the first time. I'm very excited. Is it a good idea for me and my family to go to San Antonio and Corpus Christi? Yeah, you're totally fine. Uh, we did a trip like that during COVID, and it was a great time. Puffy tacos in San Antonio. Cooper, I don't have anything on Corpus Christi, but if you watch the Galveston video, Delta Galveston, that'll give you a rough idea. Just know that the water's a lot nicer in Corpus Christi. <laughs> San Antonio, I got done some tips in San Antonio. You'll be fine. Puffy tacos when you're there. Um, you'll have a good time. Go to the San Antonio missions. It's not just the Alamo. So Chris, going coming in with the controversial topics. Just join. Thank you very much, my friend, for joining up. It's nice to see you again. And thank you very much for the super chat. Just join. So I hope you have not responded to this question. How do you think the change of monarchs in the UK will affect British money some of us have from previous trips? So for those of you who don't know, is whenever there's a new mar monarch in the UK, the new monarch becomes the new money, okay? Now, since Queen Elizabeth was on the throne for 70 years, every single coin and every single bill in circulation pretty much has her face on it. And you'll start seeing is probably, I, I would imagine if they're printing money now, once they have Prince Charles likeness, the new pounds they print will have King Charles III's picture on it. And the thing is, um, the old pounds will still work. You'll be fine. It's like old dollars still work. It just could be that eventually, not this year or next year, because the Queen was there for so long. You might look at it five years down the road. They'll say, "No, we want King. We want the King Charles notes." Because especially if the if the the new King Charles notes have extra security protection or whatever you know, for counterfeiting or whatever, then like the exchange houses might prefer that or for using that in South America or, or Africa where, you know, the currency stuff is one of them on their issue. You're going to see those things. So that's how I see it. But, you know, save your queen's bills. Like I know we have some British pounds upstairs. I'm not, I'm not getting rid of them. Like, yeah, like two, well, I, I'll use the doubles. Like I'm not going to let like 40 twenties or four twenties sit there. Like we'll leave one at home and let the other three go with us. So that's something there. So Chris Sessions, based on reward programs, is there one airline you lean more towards than the other? I, I do Delta all the time because everywhere I fly, I, I live by a regional airport, so I fly with them because they get free parking. Um, and I always have a connector through Atlanta, like everybody does. Um, but the thing is, is when I when I 
use Delta. Let's say everywhere I go, I have like four four flights. Three of those four flights, I will get upgraded to Comfort Plus every time, and maybe one of those will get upgraded to First Class. Just I mean, just because of that, it makes it worthwhile to me because I get that advantage. Now, when I had United, I flew United at time, but I never seemed to get anything for it. So once I got Delta, it just seems like I got more more bang for my my buck. Um, but one thing I always tell people is the reward programs you use. The important thing is to use your rewards. Having a million miles saved up doesn't do anything for you because they degrade in value. Because I remember back in the day, a fifty thousand miles you had will get you a flight to Europe. Now that won't fly me to Chicago from other parts of Illinois. So be careful with those. All right. Hey, Alex in Montreal. Good to see you. Mike, I have to look at my foreign money drawer to see what I have for pounds and pence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to find old pence things from back in the day. And it's like, I'll be dang. You know, for like really, really old trips, you know? So, yeah. How's it eventually invalidated? Well, it all depends on the country and what they say for, for the, the money stuff, I guess. Yes. Mike, Mike makes a great point. Use miles for upgrades, free flights, every, yeah. That, that's the thing is you have the miles, especially if you have a credit card that gives you the points, always use those things. Like I use my miles. So like sometimes I don't get the upgrade. I'm like, I want to use it. So for example, I'm going to London in like a month or so, two months or so. And I, I got upgraded to Comfort Plus, but I know when I fly over how it works because I need to do a bunch of filming. So I can't have a tired first day. I need to hit the ground and actually film at Heathrow and film coming in from Heathrow. And then at Victoria Station, I need to film. And I'm like, not Victoria Station, but when I, when I come in, I'm like St. Pancras or something. And it's like, I got to be with it. So I'm going to use my miles to get the next level up on just on the flight over. Like not for all the sections of my flight, not all the connections and stuff, but just for that Atlanta to London flight. I'm going to do that. So use your things. Yes, my last name is Walters. That's right. But don't worry. I'm used to people calling me all kinds of stuff. So that's always laugh when people are like, Walter, I love your videos. I'm like, awesome. Thank you. And they'd be like, his name's Mark. I'm like, it's okay. They, I help them. With the, they, they watch the videos and it helped them. They can call me whatever they want. It's totally fine. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, Sarah. Because Sarah Alex is my primary airport. Free parking sounds like a dream. I'll be honest with you. So we're. I'm now looking at the flights or our trips for next spring. And there was one, like, we're looking to go to, we're going to, well, we're planning to go to Mexico City for a long weekend. And I was looking at the flights, and I can fly direct from Chicago. So I'm like, oh, that's a direct flight. That's direct. Like, it's hard to pass up a direct flight, right? But I, I look at the prices, then I saw the prices from my airport near us, which is free parking, and it's literally 30 minutes from my house. 30 minutes from my house or three hours to O'Hare with the traffic. Plus spending a hundred bucks in parking. Time, like money wise, the like the flights by close by are like fifty bucks more. I'm like, yeah, you know what? It's not going to be cheaper. I'm like, I'm just going to take that local airport. But yeah, when you got the when you got those, you know, you get the better you get the better flight prices. But I make it up in parking. <laughs> oh man. So. So, Tiffany, do you have any vi travel videos specific for spooky trips? Hollywood is almost here. I know, and here's the funny thing, is if I was like the travel channel, I would have all spooky videos because they're also, all they seem to have is ghost hunters. Um, so I have a few videos on superstitions around the world, which I did I did a bunch one like year so that I could put them. So I think we have like superstitions of Lithuania, because Lithuania's got some great superstitions. One of uh, superstitions Ireland, superstitions in Spain, superstitions in the U.S. And it was like for the month of October one year, I think I put like every Wednesday there was one that came out. I thought they'd be very popular. They did nothing. Like nobody watched them. Um, so I actually have the notes for the most haunted cities in America. But the thing is, that's like a list. Like I want to try to think about like some way I can make it better because there's a lot of videos and stuff out there. Like here's the haunted cities in America. You can read that someplace else. I'm trying to find a better way to put it. Um, I know we were working at one. We were working on a video last year about the don'ts of going to a haunted house for like a fun one, uh, but I don't have anything for like specifically for that. Um, but I think we will. Like I said, we're going to Savannah, which is a spooky city. 
but we're going there like right before that, right before Halloween. So I'm like, I don't think I can film it, edit it, and get it out. Because if I put a Halloween video out like on the 29th of, Hall- of October, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to just, you know, so I've got to try to figure it out. So Garrett's popcorn over here, always a good thing to bring back. Mike, 90 minutes from three airports where I live. Most use Indy, though. Oh, I'm going to guess you're between Indy and Chicago. Uh, who's the other one you'd have then? Detroit, maybe? Yeah, I would. I, yeah, Indy. For those who don't know, Indianapolis Airport is beautiful. There's not a lot of food choices inside the terminal, so eat when you're in the little courtyard. But honestly, sometimes it's faster going through security without TSA pre-check than with it because uh, they have so many people going on. So. Am I going to the Christmas markets this year? I don't know. I'll be honest with you. I have I have a window uh, in December that I could go someplace, and I'm not sure what I'm doing. So maybe. I can say maybe, but I don't know. Indy, Fort Wayne, and Dayton. Oh, oh, so you're that one. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. I thought you were going to – well, whichever. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> Crazy. I'm not superstitious, just a little stitious. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's nice, Bonnie. We live near Orlando. Dad's dropping us off so we don't have to pay for parking. So when Dad's dropping you off, does he still get you there like six hours before your flight? That's the question of the day. Anyway, let's see. All right. ISBDL as my primary. Not sure if anyone is familiar with that one. I just love it. It's small, easy to navigate, international, 15 to 20 minutes from my house. That's just it. Like for me, because like here's one of the things is like our small airport by us, they used to have like four flights a day, three or three flights a day to Atlanta. Now we're down to two. And so it's a 6 a.m. flight or a 4 p.m. flight. Thing is, with the international flights, they leave like at seven or six, and that flight gets in at like 6 30 so you're like oh so they fly you in at the 6 a.m flight and then you have like a 10 hour layover and like oh man like i know all of the uh lounges in 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 uh, atlanta don't go to the only ones in in it was a d yeah don't go to erf uh, because yeah bad anyway so folks we're been on here about two hours um, I was just glad I got to go on. I haven't done a live on the big channel for a while, so it's really, really nice to see you all again. Um, thank you for Liam, who came down and helped me for a little while. If you want to watch him on the replay, uh, you can always follow him on his channel. He puts out like one like food ranking video. He, he loves uh, Bless Your Rank on one of those cha- another YouTube channel. So he likes to do some of the stuff they do. Um, I'm showing a couple of them. His friends show up in them. His cousins show up in them. Uh, so there's some fun stuff there. But, uh, yeah, I just really appreciate you all being here tonight. Um, Excuse me. Thank you, everybody that signed up. Uh, new patrons, members, all the people with the super chats, all the comments that are here. Sorry to get to everything, uh, but we've got two hours of fun in here, and I just want to say thank you for all that you do for us, the support you show us, because it really does make a difference for us. Every like, you know, every every view, every share. If you got a friend that's going someplace, just sharing those things really is it means the world to us. So I just want to say thank you, and and remember, we do have other channels. So if you want to learn about the food, Walter's World Eats. If you want our weekly news. That on Wednesdays, we do a live feed every Wednesday at noon, um, the latest travel news that's out there. Um, and then we have Professor Walters, which is my business thing that I do for my, my day job and all kinds of other stuff. So I just want to say thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Have a great rest of your weekend. Enjoy. I mean, it's beautiful where I'm at. Hopefully it's beautiful where you are, too. So happy travels, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye.